Hello everyone and welcome to the Engine Laboratory here at Topolansky Precision, which is a fancy way of saying welcome to my shed at Topolansky Ranch and we're going to do another high performance engine build because that's where I do all of my high performance engine builds because I don't have a garage. As odd as that seems, I do not have a garage. I still have a shed and I'm going to build a garage at some point, but uh, that's a whole nother conversation altogether. Anyway, uh, I've done some pretty cool engine builds out here on the GX200 based uh, small engine stuff. Uh, I've done a Predator 212 that has run very, very well. And I've also done a full tilt 236cc Tillotson block big bore build that is currently on my mini bike right now that has gone almost 70 miles per hour, which I don't recommend doing because uh, sometimes it seems a little sketchy going that fast on something that's designed to go 19 miles an hour. Anyway, uh, the build we're going to be doing is something that I've wanted to get my hands on and finally have. This is a Wildcat 223cc that I've picked up from EC Carburetors. Now, I've also got a few other parts to make it safe at RPM, but I'm going to do some high performance -y, uh racy stuff to it that I think is going to be a lot of fun and is something that's not going to be complicated. It's something that you can actually do yourself as well if you follow along and kind of do the same things. I have procured six different camshafts for it. I'm going to run them through the engine to see how they look, to see which one I think will work best for my application. I am going to do uh, some mild cylinder head work and uh, just put some nice attention to detail to this thing. And I think it's going to run very, very well. So I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. So this is kind of exciting for me as well. I want to take you all along for the ride. So uh, what do you say we get to it and uh, see what this thing's all about? All right. Here we go. This block of tape is kind of stuck in a couple different areas. Alright. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna take it right out. comes with a nice bag, got your instructiones in them here, I can't get I'm not wearing my glasses which I probably should be, Wildcat manual, look at this rig right here, little bag, comes with a Spark plug puller outer and put her in her. Okay. Well, there went something. Jesus. All right. Looks good. This is an EPA certified engine. Um, these are rated at a little bit higher horsepower. They're rated at seven and a half horsepower, so the same size, you know, outside dimensions as like the Predator 212. This is the competitor to the Predator, which I think is kind of fun to say. Um, good looking engine, nothing that's uh, out of the ordinary with it. Still the um, uh, three quarter inch shaft. Uh, looks Everything looks pretty standard. I think the interchangeability for parts on these is very similar to the Predator as far as what will fit on it. There's nothing wrong with this running it just the way it is. You uh, you put what, like the little stage one kits on it or things like that, which uh, will consist of you know a better air filter assembly, uh, a, a actual pipe instead of this restrictive muffler, and uh, a couple other a hotter plug and things like that. Um, this will do you just fine for 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 what uh, for just tooling around and uh, uh, actually it'd be pretty interesting to see what this would do against a stock 212 Predator right out of the box, just dyno to dyno. Um, what we will be doing after we've got this complete, at some point we will actually dyno this, and we're going to dyno it against um, you know a, a built Predator. When this is built with the parts that I'm going to put in it, we're going to dyno it against a my built Predator, which. Uh, the carburation on that is uh, one of EC's VM22s, which is a very sporty carburetor, runs very well. So uh, all in all, great looking engine. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, 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 pretty straightforward to modify. This is a Hemi head. Now the, the, the Predator Hemi is what I have and what I've modified before. This is a hemispherical combustion chamber also, and it looks 
like the ports have a little bit more meat in them to port on. Uh, I saw, I've seen one of these heads that are off and they look, uh, they look pretty interesting and I think that uh, they're gonna be pretty fun to work on and uh, we shall see their performance potential and uh, uh, other than that, nice looking piece. Now that we have the engine unboxed and we checked it out, I laid the rest of the parts out to show you what else is going into this build. Again, not very complicated, but I wanted to show you some of the cool parts that we talked about before. One, the billet flywheel. Obviously that's good for safety, but the other benefit is accuracy of timing and it does advance the timing and that is good for our application. You see that there is a new coil here. Well, why the hell would you need a new coil and a brand new engine? Well, the one that is currently in the engine limits the RPM to 4,000 RPM. Not only does it have a mechanical governor, but it has a spark limiter to limit the RPM to 4,000 RPM. Well, we sure as hell can't be having that, so we wanted a new coil so we can rev it to whatever we wanted. Uh, there's also a manifold adapter to adapt a VM22 Makuni style round slide carburetor to this cylinder head. So I will attach that and port the entire port as one so that matches up nicely. Obviously some new gaskets as well to get the thing together. Uh, one thing as a new head gasket, this is a 10 thousandths thick steel head gasket. I got that because I want to get the compression up on this particular engine and perhaps that will be the only thing I have to do, but more than likely to get the compression ratio that I want, I will have to mill the cylinder head to reduce the chamber size CC wise. We will see because I haven't measured anything yet, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. Uh, also, the billet connecting rod. Now this is a forged billet connecting rod with a heavy duty wrist pin for uh, higher RPM and a lot of abuse, a necessity, and it has bearing inserts like, a, like an automotive style connecting rod. I also have two different style valve spring setups one dual and one single spring setup depending on what camshaft that I use. Uh, depending on the RPM and all that stuff, we want to keep valve train stability intact so we have a couple of different spring options. Also here's a cut to length set of push rods because with new camshafts we're going to see what we need for a push rod and I'll show how to check that with a push rod uh, you know, length checker. Six different camshafts from the mild to the kind of wild. I don't know what camshaft we will run yet because I don't know how much work has to be done to the cylinder, cylinder head. I will be porting the cylinder head and uh, so I want to see how all these cams spec out. I will actually run all of them through with a degree wheel and degree them to see where they end up, see how much valve clearance they have, and then I'll decide which one is best for the application. So that all being said, uh, I'm very excited about this project. The easy part is done and now it's time to start the build. We're not going to get to it today because there's a bunch of stuff that has to happen. Uh, the first thing is getting this apart and measuring it as it comes apart. And that is just as important as measuring it when it goes back together because I want to know what their tolerances and their clearances and how they've set this engine up in the factory to perform like it's supposed to perform. Obviously ours is going to perform a little bit different and we got some different parts that are going to make it do that, but I want to know exactly what it measures at when it comes apart because we're going to measure the combustion chamber volume we're going to calculate a compression ratio we're going to degree the old cam coming out now that sounds crazy but why wouldn't you right we have the equipment to do it and uh, i like to know all the facts uh, building a single cylinder engine like this is no different than building a race engine for any sort of racing you know competition like a like a boat or a mud truck or a drag race or a circle track it doesn't matter um, I am not one for ripping something apart not checking anything throwing a bunch of shit together and hopefully it lasts uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of hacking things together uh, I don't like seeing it uh, all it does is it creates a situation where if something goes bad you don't know what happened right so we do every engine the same. I do every engine the same, whether what, what, what it makes for power or not. I'll build a, a, a forklift engine or a lawnmower engine the same way I would build an NHRA Pro Stock engine. It's all the same to me. So uh, always remember, precision is a decision. So choose to do it right. Measure things, pick the right parts, have good attention to detail and uh, you'll have good results always. So uh, I want I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this. Uh, this is going to be a fun build. It's not going to be crazy and it's going to keep it simple. And I think that we're going to do a, a really nice engine and I think it's going to have a, a, a good result. And I'm very excited to get this when it's done on a dyno and compare it to some other things that I've built. So uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.